You are listening to a recording from the Cooperating to Build a Better Nova Scotia Conference in Halifax, a celebration marking the United Nations International Year of Cooperatives. Okay, Alain. So you, you're you here, you were our first keynote, the person who got us first stimulated in this conference with uh, cooperating to build a better Nova Scotia. Uh, you certainly brought forward a lot, a lot to us tonight to think about, and some challenges also. In terms of what you had mentioned about... Um, about looking towards this decade uh, for cooperatives. So we mentioned uh, recently, of course, just to inform folks, there was a meeting in the United Kingdom. Uh, it was called Cooperatives United, and it was this global meeting of people involved in the cooperative movement around the world. And it was sort of this close to the International Year of Cooperatives, um, but also to declare a, a cooperative decade or a decade um, for cooperative development, this blueprint that was presented. Um, Tell me, what do you see in the future uh, of the co-op movement over the next decade, and and what is the way forward? How do we build on this momentum in a way that that really makes an impact in the movement and in the global economy? Well, uh, I I think that this this is an opportunity in a way. This is is a big challenge, and and I guess uh, we need sometimes big challenge. Uh, Co-op development uh, need a, a, a supportive environment from government, uh, sure, but uh, from community first. Uh, f- the leader of opinion have to uh, see the values of cooperative and uh, give them, as it was in the past, the, the credential to, to move. Uh, and so in terms of it, I think what's what's needed is for the cooperative to really uh, get together and uh, think about how uh, to propose to community, to local people. The, the cooperative approach to meet some of the challenge, whether it is employment, whether it is services, whether it is addressing the environment issues, all of those um, people that are concerned with uh, any issues in terms of their economic, social, cultural life should see in cooperative a solution and it should be appealing to them to get involved. Thank you. Now you talked a bit about what a transformative economy would look like. Uh, now tell us a bit more about what the economy would look like if for a moment uh, we thought about if every business was organized as a cooperative in the Canadian economy, how do you think the economy would look? What would be different about it? Um, what I said, I, I don't think it's desirable that all the economy uh, will be cooperative. Well, I, I think there is uh, some element of, of an economy that is less suited for uh, cooperative, for example, the type of activities that uh, uh, require a lot of capital and that decision is made on, on that basis. Uh, not really suited. I, I think cooperative are stronger at meeting needs closer to people. That, that, that in terms of their, their job, in terms of their consumption, in terms of their life activities. So what I think really is uh, a cooperative that is growing its influence and by uh, reaching a a, a level, uh, a certain percentage of of, uh, activities to influence how the others will make decisions, how they will return to communities, how they will uh, mitigate their objective on one hand to ensure that there's good return on investment, but on the other hand, to ensure that they will have to uh, respond to the cooperative ways of doing things and how people relate to that. So that's for me, that's that's uh, the essential. So it will be a mistake to put too much emphasis on the fact that cooperative can replace all capital-based businesses, but rather it is more uh, efficient, more productive to envisage the cooperative as being the regulator of the system, changing the way the economy is responding to peoples and ensuring that in all times, and, and, and to the best possible, that we increase the, uh, the, the, the benefit that the peoples are uh, getting from the economy. 
and if we leave only the the, the capital base, uh, I think we we will have uh, to uh, uh, face a tough time in terms of uh, uh, the middle class, the uh, the employment, uh, and the displacement of the activities. So we need to engage people into solution and what a better model than the co-op to, to engage people in solution to a point where they, they will slowly influence how the economy is returning back to the community and to the people themselves. Okay, thank you. I don't think there's any economist out there who would disagree uh, with the idea that we need a mixed economy, so I think that's fair, but it would be interesting to see what you're talking about in terms of cooperatives really having an impact and influence on, on the rest of the economy and that sort of being the standard. Um, I wanted to dig a bit. You, you mentioned tonight that one of the reasons that people are, are interested in cooperatives and join cooperatives or form cooperatives can be that they are, are victims of an economic system that has wronged them or has missed their needs, is not is not fulfilling what it is that they need. Um, as just again, as just one way that people get involved. Um, but more and more, we're seeing, uh, you know, the majority of folks getting involved in, in some co-ops are the middle class. And so, can you describe this phenomena? So, how is it that um, middle class people are getting involved and being leaders in the cooperative movement um, as opposed to as opposed to other people that maybe are, are not having uh, some of their fundamental needs met. I haven't done any sociology uh, <laughs> assessment of that, but I, but I would say the, the, the middle class uh, are very conscious that they are the one financing the public services, the public goods, uh, the benefits, so whatever it is, uh, healthcare services or uh, education or others, this is basically uh, funded through uh, their capacity to contribute to a good job, good salaries and, and so on. Uh, and I think they, they are getting involved because they value those services and they want those services to continue. Well, that's that's uh, for me uh, the the major incentive. Those those people uh, want result. They want this to be accountable, and they are looking at ways where we will have more for the dollar they, they invest. So they want to to be closer to decision. They they want to be able to uh, to touch the result. In some hand. And that's why they they are getting involved in uh, cooperative to meet some of those needs. So you've touched a bit now on, on this idea of cooperative governance or membership engagement and participation. So if, you know, you've had this very extensive history and involvement in the co-op movement, certainly I think it's fair to to describe you as a thought leader in, in cooperatives uh, in Canada. And so if you could give advice to, to any cooperative in terms of their governance or how it is that they engage their members, um, what is it that stands out to you that you've observed over the years that would be really good advice to share well I think uh, the smaller the cooperative the easier it is so the, the challenge is, is when you you, you you have a larger membership and uh, my advice would be that uh, we, we need boards and uh, AGM people interested need to uh, really constantly uh, try uh, mechanism to inform people, to engage uh, people, to show them the result of the cooperative activities, and uh, uh, even if they don't participate to an AGM, they, they do have access to information that link their cooperative action to the result. So that that's the challenge, and through that, uh, ensuring that uh, at some point. People are getting interested not only when there's bad time, but also uh, looking at being comforted that the cooperative is doing well, continue to, to, to meet and continue to return to community, not only uh, in dollar terms, but in capacity, in capacity to support other social structure of uh, engaging in public debate and engaging in transforming the environment and the community in which they live. Thank you. It's interesting that you bring up the concept of, of crisis because I was just in a conference uh, earlier in November in Ann Arbor with the North American Students of Cooperation, of which the membership base is a number of uh, student housing co-ops, mainly in the States, but also housing co-ops across Canada and the U.S. And 
one of the ideas that came up and, and it really resonated for people was that co-ops really excel in times of crisis. We've seen that through the economic crisis that co-ops have performed better and, and fared uh, better than their than other types of corporations. Um, but the, the criticism was made that cooperatives don't always <laughs> exceed as well in times of, of prosperity. And so are you able to, to say a bit more about that or describe why you think that that may happen? Well, I think this relates to, to uh, uh, cooperative are uh, businesses, so uh, we, we, should, we should be um, concerned with generalization. So there, there's maybe some cooperative that cannot really uh, make it in terms of uh, prosperity for a decision, but others in the same sector activity with the right board, with the right vision, with the right management are thriving, are making progress, are gaining influence in their market. So we, we have to make distinction between what we see and, we see and perceive and uh, extrapolate that to the all co-ops of sector. We, we have to be, we have to remember that for for me, cooperative is an enterprise. It is a business. And it has the right to uh, fail in some case. Uh, you, you, cooperative can make bad decisions. They, they can uh, have the, the wrong resource, uh, they, they can have the wrong managers, they, they, but they can have good managers. In some cases, they, they may have managers that will um, uh, will challenge the governance structure and will direct the governance. So, so here it's a question of a, uh, a very uh, fine-tuned conscious at the board level that at some point their decisions are entrepreneurial decisions. And when they make it, they make the best decision. But it may happen that the market and the ingredient are not delivering the result. And that's happened. But that's mean that uh, uh, a two village down the road, another region, a similar cooperative uh, has success, tremendous success. And uh, the same model, the same cooperative type. So here we, we have to accept that uh, we, we have to allow cooperative to behave as a different types of entrepreneur, but entrepreneur. And entrepreneurship means innovate, taking risks, and uh, exploring ways of serving the, the members. And at some point, uh, making investment that will make it or not. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I wanted to go back to to this issue that you raised about how it is that we currently measure our economy. So how our current way of accounting for our economy, specifically looking at things like GDP, are missing quite a significant portion of, of the activity that we undertake. Um, so if, if as economic actors, as people involved in co-op enterprises, if we continue to use this sort of non-cooperative yardstick or these, these measurements that are meant for other types of corporations um, in terms of, of how they perform economically to, and when we're looking at measuring our success what do you think the impact is on our cooperative businesses? Well, uh, so, certainly the, the cooperative uh, uh, we have to to define the end results in terms of the benefit to peoples and community and that's where it is. if we uh, continue uh, uh, referring only to money the, the co-ops are going to lose because at, at some point they are not there to uh, to have the maximum revenue the maximum income so compared with others they may they may not uh, stand but uh, co-ops of uh, 70 years of existence with uh, uh, an equivalent return on investment of two or three percent are still there still making a difference and still delivering the services, st still improving the condition of their members, whether it is farmers in some situation, whether it is a uh, worker in other situation, whether it is consumer by giving them more power with the dollars they have. So uh, here we need to, to find a ways to uh, uh, highlight the uh, the end result of the cooperative action in terms of uh, true cooperative people has been able to improve their quality of life by by a large degree 
and, and that's what's different to, to says for for many reasons uh, uh, the 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 numbers of cooperative the influence the the, the market share they, they, they have in some situation but uh, always when uh, a cooperative disappear the member have uh, lost control over the delivery and the production of the good services they, they are using and when they lost that then they have no mechanism to influence really uh, that that services and make it a services that they define they control and they use okay thank you now i want to shift gears to to talk about this idea of entrepreneurship that you've, you've mentioned several times tonight and, and this concept of innovation. And it makes me think about leadership in the movement because some people uh, wonder if it's possible to have leadership in a type of cooperative structure. So if we're, if we're collective in our approach to the businesses that we undertake, uh, where is it that we see leadership and, and how would you define a, a solid leader within the co-op movement? What kind of traits would they have? What kind of actions would they undertake? But the, 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 the leader of a co-op movement is the leader that will be able to uh, engage the membership in, in a direction, in a convincing way that, that has a, a clear vision of where to bring and the clear, clear vision of the result. And they are engaging the members based on that result. And I think too often people are uh, spending too much time on the means and the mechanism to... to to reach that I think the first thing is to uh, engage people in the transform world that that people want or the transform community they, the community they want or the transform group of people they are if you are artists at some point uh, everybody knows the average salaries of an artist so the fact that they get into a cooperative and then suddenly collectively they modify the average income of, of artists and they, they are doing it themselves and they control the way they, they do it so that's the that's the powerful of of the uh, the leadership so when you when you convince uh, the uh, the uh, the members that uh, this vision is making a real difference in in their in their life in the way they they are served by the economy uh, then the, the logic is they will follow them with the entrepreneurial decision of uh, investing, uh, finding ways, making some sacrifice, mm-hmm. and uh, transforming uh, the uh, the environment uh, that they want to transform. Thank you, Alain. Uh, I was I was trying to trick you a bit there because I, I was. Um wanted to reflect on you being quite a leader in the movement too and so I was able to get you to share a bit about the traits uh, of a leader and, and what it is that we see in terms of leadership in the movement and and to identify you as one of those leaders too because I think it's important that we acknowledge you for all of the years of service that you've contributed through the uh, Rural and Cooperative Secretariat with the Government of Canada and uh, certainly with the passion that you've brought to the work that you've done and, and for being a really great liaison between government and the sector to make sure that uh, the communication is always there uh, to make sure that we found a way to speak the same language and that we're always working towards the development really of Canada and of our communities across the country and of the people involved um, in those communities especially those with uh, needs that that need to be met so uh, I want to thank you for that I especially want to thank you tonight for offering our keynote uh, to kick off the cooperating to build a better Nova Scotia conference and uh, and And we'll hope that the rest of the conference is just as stimulating. So thank you. Thank you. Best luck.